In today's episode. You want me to tuck my shirt in? Sure boss. I called my patient's mistress, but I was just doing what I was told. Oh, you want a photo roster of my staff to facilitate the tattling of tales? Okay. So let's get started. You want me to tuck my shirt in? Sure boss. Years ago I worked at a certain big box pet store with employees in blue shirts and poorly maintained fish tanks. Back then employees were required to tuck their uniform shirts into their khakis, with an exemption for pregnant female employees, which I was at the time of this occurrence. I worked the registers with my untucked shirt with no issues for months while I was prego. When I was about 8 months pregnant and just a few weeks shy of going on maternity leave we got a new manager that was painfully clueless and stupid, isn't that always the way? So one day, this manager calls myself and the other main cashier, who was also just as prego as I was, into the office, with another manager as a witness, to tell us that we are fine cashiers, but our uniforms are lacking. The other cashier and myself are just, because we both had our khakis, uniform shirts and black sneakers. Everything was neat and clean, so we both had no clue what he was talking about. I ask him what he is referring to, he replies that our shirts have to be tucked in. The other cashier and I have both been with the company for a while, and we are both super familiar with the uniform policy, so she and I both object and let him know that pregnant employees are exempt from the tucking policy. He waves his hand at us and says that we are incorrect and that all employees must tuck their shirts. The other manager that is there acting as a witness chimes in that we are correct, but clueless manager cuts witness manager off and says he knows what the policy is and that previous management was just being lax, they weren't, pregnant employees were actually exempt. The other cashier and I shrug and leave the office to go tuck our shirts in. Clueless manager left for the day right after talking to us. Here's where the malicious compliance comes in. We tucked our shirts in for sure, but if you aren't familiar with pregnant fashion, you essentially have two options for pants. Option 1 is using a belly band on your existing pants, or using pants with a belly band attached already. A belly band is essentially a very wide elastic strap that goes around the baby bump to hold your pants up, which essentially puts the top edge of your pants at your ribs. Option 2 is to do the hair band trick which is to take an elastic hair tie and loop it through the button hole of your pants and around the button of the pants. This gives you a few extra inches of waist room in your pants to accommodate the baby bump and also exposing your underwear slash lower abdomen since you cannot zip your fly. Both options look absolutely ridiculous and are meant to be concealed under a shirt and they only get more ridiculous the more pregnant you are which we were both heavily pregnant by this time. For those unfamiliar by 8 months pregnant you are basically Violet from Willy Wonka with an internal Oompa Loompa kicking you in the bladder every 20 minutes. So we both emerge, waddle gloriously, from the back room where we tucked in our shirts looking absurd. I had my shirt tucked into my belly band just below my boobs, and the other cashier had hers tucked into her hair band closed pants, below her belly, and with her leopard print underwear exposed. Clueless manager was already gone for the day, so he was not present to see our magnificent uniform compliance. He wasn't in for another two days, so he didn't see our dutiful compliance, but all of our customers and co-workers sure did. Our regulars asked why we had our shirts tucked like that and of course we obliged them and explained that clueless manager insisted we tuck our shirts in to comply with the uniform policy. For two full days and part of that first shift after clueless manager left for the day, Customer complaints to corporate about our treatment rolled in and co-workers called the employee hotline to report clueless manager. District manager is pissed about the whole thing, which we found out on day 3. On day th three, return of clueless manager, he enters the store, sees the other cashier and myself with our beautifully ridiculous uniforms and asks why we are dressed like that. Backslash, slash you told us to tuck our shirts in. He gets red in the face and beelines to the office. 
He calls us into the office immediately and starts going off on us for not taking the uniform policy seriously. Mid tirade the district manager arrives, furious. She turned to us prego egos and nicely told us to untuck our shirts and head back out to the floor before turning to clueless manager and going ballistic on him for enforcing something that we pregos were exempt from. Turns out clueless manager ruined district manager's days off because of all the complaints that came in about the two pregnant employees forced by a male manager to show their underwear slash pregnancy attire in public due to an absurd uniform policy. The complaints weren't just about the manager, they were about the company uniform policy as well, the customers didn't know the real policy. And the employee hotline complaints as well. All of these had to be handled by the district manager ASAP, because the sheer number of complaints in such a short time meant that the regional manager was breathing down the district manager's neck to resolve the issue. District manager forced an apology to us out of clueless manager and treated us to lunch. We also got our stools to sit on at the register's back, clueless manager took our stools away, because if you can lean, you can clean. Clueless manager was sent to back HR training and fired shortly after for another similar violation, I was on maternity leave so I didn't get to get to wish him farewell. I called my patient's mistress, but I was just doing what I was told. This happened back in 2009. I was working part-time at a doctor's office while I was in nursing school. I was one of the receptionists and did all the filing and cataloging and such. It was boring work, but the doctor, my boss, guaranteed me a job after nursing school so that's why I did it. This particular doctor was an orthopedic surgeon. We had lots of patients coming in for MRIs, CT scans, and X-rays. This one particular patient, Frank, was scheduled to have surgery in a couple days, and he needed to come and pick up his MRIs and X-rays from our office and bring them with him to his procedure, yes, looking back at how ass-backwards things used to be is so frustrating. All these things are 100% electronic now, and even back then they were too, but my boss was old school. So anyway, I called Frank to tell him to come pick up his images, but he didn't answer. I called him again during lunch but still no answer so i left him a message the following day i called him again but still no answer it was imperative that frank got his images or else he wouldn't be able to have his surgery so i looked in his file to see if he had any other contact information he listed his home phone number as well as his wife's cell i called his house and left a message and i also called his wife amy but she didn't answer either so i left her a message as well the office manager, Diane, told me to just call whoever was listed in his emergency contacts because if Frank didn't get his images and missed his surgery, then she would have to do a whole new stack of paperwork to reschedule him, and she didn't want to be bothered. I looked to see if there was an emergency contact, and Frank listed a woman named Helen. Relation to patient, girlfriend. I told Diane I didn't want to call Helen when I had already left a message for Amy, as it would put me in an awkward position. Diane said that as long as the patient listed them as an emergency contact, I could call them. She also said that it's not uncommon for couples to be separated but still legally married for insurance reasons, and that this could possibly be the case for Frank and Amy, which I guess made sense. I really wanted to believe that no one would be stupid enough to put their secret lover as their emergency contact. I didn't want to get fired for being insubordinate, so I called Helen, and she actually answered her phone. I was secretly hoping she wouldn't, and told her Frank's images needed to be picked up prior to his surgery. She came by during lunch, got the images, and then left. I immediately called Frank again to let him know that Helen picked up his images, and to not worry about it, but this fool wasn't answering his phone, so I left him another message. A couple hours later, Amy called back and said she wasn't able to answer before because she was teaching but she got our message and was coming to pick up Frank's images now that school was done for the day. I told her that the images had already been picked up. I tried to be as vague as possible. Amy, who picked them up? I know Frank is still busy at his office and hasn't had the chance to come get them. Me, again, trying really hard to be vague, we called someone from his emergency contact list. Amy, was it his brother, Steve? Me, at this point I'm really nervous, no, not his brother. 
Amy, well then who? Me, Helen. Amy, who is Helen? I don't know anyone named Helen. Me, I'm not sure, but since she was on Frank's emergency contact list, and no one else was answering their phone, we called her, and she already came, and got the images. Confused, Amy hung up. The following day was Frank's surgery. The day after Frank's surgery, my boss jokingly asked me what the hell did you do to that guy? He came and all pissed at me saying that my secretary told his wife about his other girlfriend. I told my boss what happened and that Diane told me to call the girlfriend, and he understood. Diane tried to throw me under the bus by saying I didn't tell her that Helen was Frank's girlfriend, and that I had told her Helen was just a friend, and that she never would have given me the green light to call a patient's mistress, but I reminded her in front of my boss that she had said it was possible for Frank and Amy to be married but separated. This B asterisk TCH was trying to cover her A asterisk guess, because she probably thought it was some kind of HIPAA violation, but nothing ever happened. I was 18 years old at the time and just did whatever my superiors told me because I was really thirsty for job security after college, but I ended up not working there and went to work at a hospital instead. Oh, you want a photo roster of my staff to facilitate the tattling of tales? Okay. I spent my summers as a teen working as a lifeguard at the local lake slash water park. The job was pretty hard, we often had large groups rent out the pavilions and leave them absolutely trashed, not to mention the state in which they'd leave the bathrooms, which we also had to clean. Alcohol was permitted, so the later it got, the drunker they'd get and the less attention they'd pay to, like, making sure their kids weren't actively drowning. We'd regularly have to rescue kids who bobbed out too far, or worse, had gone down the water slide into water over their heads after assuring the guard at the top that they could swim. There were a fair share of adults we'd have to pluck out of the deep water too, who were just far too overconfident in their swimming abilities. But we made up for the gross cleaning jobs and the constant dampness from saves with a healthy dose of tomfoolery, and it was the best job I ever had. Cut to a few years later, I still had summers off, but I'd moved with my partner to be more convenient for her job, so I got a job through a lifeguard company managing a local swimming pool in an area that is, to say, hoitier and toitier. This pool ran like a dream, no booze, no deep water, no slides, and significantly less danger. I kept the staff on their toes with stories of what could happen, and we prevented any serious injury or accident from happening with proactive rules enforcement. That wasn't enough for the members of this swim club though, they constantly found nits to pick, and my time as manager was spent mostly as complaint department. Not only did they want to complain to me, but they wanted to complain to their property manager about our staff. The property manager was basically the person who made the decision to outsource the running of the pool to the lifeguard company. We'd had a few good ones who rarely got involved, but this one was a typical micromanager. She wanted us to hang a poster with pictures of all the staff, and their names so the resident busybodies could name names while they nitpicked. I said, okay. We'll put up a staff board with all of our faces on it. But, I should mention, the lifeguard company took sun protection very seriously. We weren't allowed to guard without several layers of protection, sunscreen, shirt, sunglasses, hat, umbrella, etc. Plus we were supposed to be rescue ready with the lifeguard tube in hand and our whistle ready. So that's how we posed for our pictures. If someone came to our impromptu headshot session out of uniform, oh ho, can't have that, put on a shirt, here's my hat, oh your sunglasses aren't polarized, best wear mine instead, pose with your whistle ready. Once the board was up, all of the guards looked nearly identical. The lifeguard company owners, the people who actually hired and paid us, loved it. They already thought we were the model of professionalism, and this sealed the deal on that image. The, the members were still stuck complaining to the property manager by saying, uh, one of the blonde girls yelled at my kid for breaking the rules, can we get her fired? And the property manager would have to go through me anyway to find out who that was. Before my malicious compliance, if they could tell me what time they had a problem with something, I could just check the schedule and tell them exactly who was on duty, but never mind that now. 
I ended up leaving the job a few months later anyway, because I couldn't keep up with the fabricated drama and the extreme levels of pettiness the members and property manager would stoop to. I did love testing the pH of those pools though, anytime it was too high, I'd mutter to the staff, must be too many basic bitches here today. If you made it to the end of the video, thanks for watching. Don't forget to like, subscribe and share, and we will see you in the next video.